Alrighty everyone, what is going on and welcome back to today's video. In today's video we're going over a, uh, a pretty general generalized topic in terms of the Siege community and it is how to get better. I think I've made one video on this in my lifetime and um, it did alright but I think we can I think we can try again. Try and add in some new content. I just went back and watched that uh, last one I was just talking about. Try and add in some new stuff and just add what I think uh, you, you really need to consider in today's Siege because that video was made ages ago so... With that said, if you guys are interested in anything else from my channel, make sure to leave a like on this video to help it get out. And also make sure to drop a sub if you're interested in checking out more videos from me. We upload daily Siege content here. So um, if you're interested in any of that, make sure to uh, do those things if you want to. And let's get into the video. So, how to get better. I have, uh, I think it's eight dot points written down here, and I'm just going to slowly cover all of those throughout this video. And um, I'm, I don't have a script, I'm just going to talk about the specific dot point, and I'm just going to elaborate on what I think, coming out of my mind, that you need to do in terms of how to get better. So, um, in, in the first thing I have written here is aim. This is the, uh, the big bad wolf of siege, I think. Uh, a lot of people consider it to be essential. A lot of people will say aim isn't everything. I think in terms of... Uh, Rainbow Six Siege, which is a first-person shooter. I think we do need to consider that uh, the aim is very important. Aim is like a very big part of the game, and although it is a, a strongly utility-based game, um, there's a lot of different things you can do other than shoot your gun. I think shooting your gun is still remotely... Uh, I don't know why I'm saying remotely. It's, it's just essential to... Uh, use, utilizing this wins. So in in the most simple terminology that I'm going to try and put it in is uh obviously 99% of the time you're probably you're probably not going to uh be uh, I don't know planning the diffuser etc. You're probably going to be shooting at people. So that's what I'm talking about. Use uh, aim is very essential. Using your gun is very essential, and all of that just really ties into the game uh, pretty well. So training your aim is one of the major things you can do to improve easily if you wish to do that. So that is something you can definitely do and my my go-to strategies for improving aim would 100% 100% uh, be terrace hunt so jump just jumping into a terrace hunt putting time into that with your uh, with a lot of uh, try and be as versatile as you can with the operators when you're playing terrace hunt just try and get as much practice in as you can although it is AIs um, it, it really does help train your aim more than anything I feel like and um, you, you really can learn how to get your crosshair placement correct your trigger discipline correct just your everything correct Correct, and it really does help more than you'd think in terms of improving your aim. I definitely think you guys should go check the aim trainers out in Terrace Hunt. Um, there's plenty of videos all over the internet on how to do it, and um, if you're interested in any of that, make sure to go watch one of those after this one if you are specifically trying to work on your aim. But in terms of how to get better, there's still a lot more dot points I have. The second dot point I have written down here is Rainbow Six Siege is a team game. There's really no, there's really no denying that this game is obviously not meant to be played as a solo cure it you can be played as a solo cure there's nothing wrong with being a solo cure but as a, it's a team game you're obviously going to be a lot more effective if you're playing with more than one person because that means you have communication throughout the site uh you have you have utility um what's the word linking i suppose you could say so you can work together and uh figure all that stuff out and get it just sorted and then you just have more awareness and situational just knowing of what's going on around the area just because you s simply have more than one person like in your party or just talking at some stage the, as i said it is a team game and with the maps being the way that they're set out they re you really can't be communicated and letting people know consistently if you do have the numbers of a team to really give consistent call outs throughout the whole map of what's going on and what's needed because even if someone dies you have the utility such as cameras uh uh, whatever gadgets you have um, on whatever side you're on that you can also be handy drones as well uh, I don't know Valkyrie expands the utility simply with her gadget and there's plenty more operators that do the exact same thing and communicating all of this together makes it a lot much of a uh, a lot much isn't a word a lot better of an experience and it also makes it a lot easier to just c communicate throughout the map and just figure out what is going on and it makes it easier to play and this is why you'll find the majority of the higher ranked players have consistent stacks or pe or just uh, a, a wide range of people that they can cons consistently rely on to just squad up and jump into some ranked and this is why they perform so well because they're all 
uh, they've all reached like the the highest level they can really get to in terms of aim, uh, strategy, stuff like that. And they just require a consistent team to work with to push through that, and then they can stay in the high ranks and they're chilling. So yeah, it's a team game. As much as we don't like to admit it sometimes, and as much as we as some people like prefer to play solo, which is completely fair. But in terms of getting better, you're gonna want to try and uh, expand your arsenal and find a team. The third dot point I've written down here is operators. Obviously, this is the the other half of siege pretty much obviously the first half i was talking about is aim then the second half is operators i feel like operators is the kind of unique thing that you'll find in siege and not actually i don't really know about unique but the way the operators function is probably the unique thing that you'll find about siege because they all have their own individual specialties or they all have their own individual gadgets they all have well, most of them have their own individual weapon loadouts, except for the newer ones. We haven't seen a new gun in a while. But they all have their own stuff. So picking operators is uh, more of a more of a task than I feel like some people like to set it out to be. And just picking someone because you saw, um, I don't know, Godly slamming someone with them in his YouTube video. And picking that operator isn't going to make you Godly. And I think, I, think, I don't know if this is a... I don't even know if that's a common thing that people do, but picking essential and useful operators is always going to be more beneficial to the team that I was just talking about than playing someone that brings really no utility that to the team. Most of the time, if you're finding yourself in a team, you're going to want to bring a solid amount of anchors, I'd say at least two, and then you're going to want at least uh, at least one Roma, I feel like, and then you're probably going to want two light Romas or doing whatever else they feel like doing, like just sitting on the, sitting in some random area, even extra anchors, three anchors, two Romas, I feel like is probably a good loadout, etc. And bringing the operators to fill these roles is an essential thing about playing Siege. So if you have people anchoring, you don't want people playing Kavira while they're sitting on the site. You want people playing Rook, Doc, Smoke, etc. And then if they're roaming, that's when you want people to play Kavira, and you don't want people roaming with Rook, Smoke, Doc. So it really just is, uh, it's a little bit of operator knowledge that you'll probably learn over time from playing the game if you are really new watching this video and you don't know much about the operators. But you'll find that majority of the time, they the, the best way to categorize them is by their speeds. This isn't the case all the time, but if you look at their speeds, you'll find that basically any operator with one speed, you should not be playing uh, off the site, and anyone with three speed, you should be playing off the site. I feel like that's basically the situation 99% of the time. As I said, that's not the case all the time. There are uh, individuals that you'll find that may have a different thing. Um, you'll also find that two speeds in between are the people who like to light roam stuff. If you're new to the game, that's like a little summary, but picking operators is a lot more essential than you think. And if you guys want to operate a, if you guys want to like a, a overall operator picking guide, I can make that in the future, so let me know. The other, another dot point I have written down here, my fourth one is strategy. So strategy is another big part of the game. I feel like I, I've, I've, I'm outlying a lot of big parts of the game apparently, but strategy is when you actually jump into the game with these operators and this team after the last two dot points that I was talking about, and then you jump into this game and then strategy is what you, what you do with your team and these operators. So you'll find that uh, a prime example of strategy is uh, Thermite. Thermite goes up to a hard breach, uh, a breachable wall that is uh, really important to breach into if you want to make it easy to get into a site. A prime example of this is armory lockers on border. Um, you go up to that wall, you breach it, you have a, uh, you have a strong line of sight. Um, it could be done with any hard breacher, by the way, not just thermite. You walk in there, and then you just, you're in. You have a large line of sight. You obviously are not in. If someone has a deployable shield set up on that inside, you're going to have contest. Someone sitting behind that half wall, you're going to have contest. But you have a direct line of sight into the site, and this is essentially a strategy. It's a strategy of utilizing operators and team play, because when you bring a thermite, you're going to want to bring a thatcher, or a twitch, or, some, or an IQ, or a zofia to go below to get rid of the bandits, etc which is a strategy that the defending team has put on that wall to stop you from getting in so strategies are kind of i feel like strategies are more team based things like obviously you're going to need more than one person to run an efficient strategy and basically it just means coming together and having a plan for the round um i'm sure most of you guys already know what strategy means but coming together and having a plan for the round and then executing it and actually uh performing it with just precision accuracy 
it will help you out more than you think. And if you actually have like a consistent five stack, like I was just talking about in that team game, and you can come up with a strategy for maps to all have your own individual push points, all have your individual roles, this will probably help you out more than anything else on this list. Now, I have a few more dot points, but I think I've been talking for a bit too long, so I'm going to try and make them a little bit quicker. I think I'm kind of rambling a little bit, so peaking and positioning, I feel like this is one I can sum up pretty quickly. Peaking and positioning is something you have, it's a, it's a, it's a part of aim. Obviously, you're gonna, when you're aiming, you're going to peak and you're going to position yourself. Positioning yourself just means not exposing yourself too much when you're peaking, so you'll find when you peak a door, you want to try and, uh, you want to think about where your body is and try and keep it as covered as possible so the enemy has, so the person you're peaking at has less chance of shooting you, and peaking is literally, is a, it's its own video pretty much. There's a whole, there's a whole different video I could do on peaking. You can quick peak, you can slow peak, you can swing, you can do so many different things with peaking that it really could be a own video and um it pretty much just to summarize it quickly is to just work with a peak that you feel confident in so if you feel confidence fast peaking someone so just running around corners do that if you feel confident slow peaking someone taking it slower just trying to line them up and get that consistent spray go ahead if you like swinging people go ahead it's it's really just what you feel comfortable in and you'll probably find your comfortable peaking strategy within the first few Within the first few hours of you playing Siege, I think, I don't know, but you'll get it eventually. And if not, um, I'm pretty sure there's probably peaking guides already up on YouTube as well, so make sure to go check them out. Um, this is just a quick summary because I literally talk about this in every video, but using your drone. You have two drones. Try and use them as effectively as possible. Don't waste that first drone that you spawn in, in, in the prep phase when you're attacking. Keep it. Use it to find the objective and then just get rid of it. Do not get it destroyed. Having two drones is always going to be better than having one drone. And droning effectively wherever you push is always going to benefit you than just running in with your ash with your R4C in hand, hoping to get a few kills before you die. And then the final thing, the final thing I've written down here is utility, which is obviously your effective uh, effectiveness with your gadgets that you have as operators. I think I've already touched up on this, but if you're going to play a specific operator that has a important utility, an example of this is thermite like I was talking about before don't let it go to waste don't rush in and think you're playing ash and then lose the like one of the best utilities you can bring on the attacking side because you died early obviously if you get spawn peaked that's just unlucky it is probably going to get your team raging at you because then they don't have a thermite but it's it, it happens to everyone don't really beat yourself up over that but if you do something intentionally that gets you killed because you made a stupid play while you're playing an important operator this is what I'm referring to when I'm saying don't waste your utility and this is the this is the case with basically every operator that has a team based gadget if you're playing vigil and you die no one's going to care your gadget is self-centered but if you're playing uh, let's say you're playing, uh, I don't know, Doc, and you die in the first 10 seconds. You've just wasted one utility on the team out of only five. So just think about that when you're picking operators. And other than that, that's about all I have to say. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to smash that like button, drop a sub notification bell, and also make sure to come check out my Twitch streams. Links in the description down below. I'd love to see you guys there. With that said, that's about all I have to say. Um, I hope you found these tips useful. If you did, let me know down below. If you didn't, also let me know down below and just include the tips you think should be on this list and hopefully people can go to the comments and find some more tips that I may have missed and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Untried.